You are listening to the Sean Hannity Radio Show Podcast. This is Jonathan Gillum filling in for Sean Hannity on the Sean Hannity Radio Show. Now is my good buddy Scott Ulinger and Dr. Uh, Shiva Ayodori. Um, Scott Ulinger is a congressional candidate for Pennsylvania's 5th District. He's a former CIA operations officer and co-host of the podcast, The Station Chief. You can find him on Twitter, at The Station Chief. And Dr. Shiva, as he's called, a.k.a. Dr. Shiva, is a Massachusetts U.S. Senate candidate running against uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and uh, I can't thank you guys both enough. So, Dr. Shiva, you know, I had you on David Webb's show with me the other day, and you just said in passing that you, you invented email and, and when you were at MIT, which is very interesting because Scott Euler used to work for the CIA where they read all our emails. <laughs> so that's interesting. That's right. Yeah, the CIA was reading that. <laughs> While I was creating it. Yeah, I mean, I actually did it, believe it or not, before I came to MIT when I was a 14-year-old kid in a small medical college in Rutgers University. You guys probably remember in the old days, remember the secretary had the inbox, outbox folders? Right. Remember the old pneumatic tubes? I converted that to the electronic form, called it, email, got the first U.S. copyright, and wrote 50,000 lines of code before I came to MIT. But that was the first email system. Wow. Uh, we're not talking about text messaging. Wow. Yeah. And Scott, you're running for, I'm sorry, I, I, I said this wrong, Pennsylvania's. 15th district. I think I said 5th. It's 15th That's district. Right. Um, That's right. The, um, the, incumbent, the incumbent congressman decided to follow the path of uh, Flake and Corker and not seek re-election because he's basically blocking the Trump agenda. Yeah. Well, let me ask you. So the reason I want to have you guys on together is because I know you, Scott. I talked to you, Dr. Shiva, uh, last uh, week or two weeks ago, and you both – are not establishment people. You are you are both individuals who are experienced free thinkers and who have the three the big three things that make up wisdom, which we have none in it seems like in Washington D.C. That's knowledge, understanding, and experience. And you all are leaders in your field. How do you? I guess the question, Scott, I'll start with you. When when you go to Washington D.C. and you will you will be there. What do you feel like is going to be your biggest hurdle? Because you're going to be in, you're really going to be in an environment that is not uh, an environment of your peers. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the, the job number one is going to be to do my best um, by the people in my district and, and basically fight a lot of the corruption that we see all around in forms of, you know, the deep state and, um, what's going on now with, you know, uh, the ongoing saga of uh, Uranium One and, uh, you know, Fusion GPS and, and things like that. The People are just tired and they want the swamp to be drained. You have to start somewhere. So I'd like to start with things like that. And what about you, Dr. Shiva? Well, you know, it's interesting. In Massachusetts, if you look at the facts, uh, Massachusetts was rated the lowest in public integrity, which means the best in corruption the third highest uh, than the national average in opioid addiction and the worst infrastructure. And if you look at that, that was all brought to you by, um, you know, the parties of Elizabeth Warren, the never Trump or Republican Charlie Baker and Mitt Romney and all Harvard graduates, by the way. And what's fascinating is Harvard doesn't pay a single dollar in tax. And one of the things we've been asserting really hard is that Harvard is fundamentally a forty five billion dollar uh, fake university pretending to be a he essentially it's a hedge fund that's what harvard really is it's a fake university uh, which is actually a hedge fund so and on the flip side in massachusetts for every 17 skilled job openings only one person is skilled and so what you really ha uh, created or what these guys have created in massachusetts uh, within the swamp is a lot of educated people uh, quote unquote educated people who are unskilled to take on the 21st century so the biggest thing we want to do is unleash Botech schools here we want to uh, ensure that we really start scaling America and really recognize that down the street is where all the nerds are. 33,000 businesses came out of MIT, uh, $2 trillion in revenue for the entire nation uh, in terms of annual revenue being generated. So it's time that everyday working people, blue-collar, high-tech blue-collar workers, uh, everyday people actually run this country, and that's what our campaign is about. So with that being said, that's a, a great segue into this, is right. how do normal blue-collar people – run for office is there any way that they can do this and not have to subscribe to the establishment mentality scott go ahead um i think i think that that can be done because um at this point because now after 2016 we have uh you know the game has changed somewhat and there are a lot of organizations out there and a lot of individuals who are who seek to 
who believe in the message. They believe in the president's agenda, and they're willing to support candidates who are willing to go against the establishment and support that agenda. So it's never going to be easy. But I think for the first time, you know, uh, in many a year, uh, regular people, citizen politicians and uh, blue collar candidates are going to be able to find sources of funding to basically ensure the will of the people is followed. So and, and go ahead, Dr. Shiva. One of the things, you know, if you look at historically at many of the major phase shifts in American politics, it's always been technology. You know, uh, Roosevelt, it was radio. Kennedy, it was TV. Uh, you know, I don't really care for Obama, but he used social media, Trump, Twitter. And the next phase is what we call uh, the use of data warehousing and uh, big data technologies that really help us do targeting but make it accessible. What's happened is the two parties, the GOP establishment and the Democrats, do not make the data available to everyday independent candidates. That's how they control the entire uh, process of, quote unquote, democracy in this country. One of the things we're doing uh, and, uh, you know, given that I got the four degrees from MIT, started a bunch of companies, we've created an infrastructure that we're running to uh, use in our campaign that's innovative technology. Part of what we want to do is we want to make that technology accessible to all independent candidates. It's really going to come down to leveling the playing field. You know, the iPhone has leveled the playing field. Smartphones have leveled the playing field. It's going to come through technology enabling everyone with very little money to compete with the big guys. And that's what's going to get very, very exciting. So, so we, uh, you know, again, it's financially, it's going to be difficult for uh, people to compete because in congressional races, for instance, uh, Scott, th- those used to be in the hundreds of thousands. And as we saw down in, um, was that in uh, Alabama? I think it was this last right. year where it got into the into the tens of millions. Or oh, Georgia, that's right. That was Georgia. Right. It extended into the yeah. it extended into the millions. That's right. So that. Um, I guess in a way it's a good thing that you start getting national attention on on local congressional elections, but perhaps along with national attention, you also get an increased need for funding, right? So that's that's something that um, is going to have to be squared away. But uh, fortunately, I found some people who were um, very supportive of my candidacy, and I think they're going to be continuing to be supportive of a lot of other individuals running for Congress across the country who are, you know, willing to stand up against the establishment and ensure that the will of the people is, you know, carried through. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shiva, you know, you talked about Harvard, for instance, and, you know, there's when people think of the deep state now, they're they're familiar with this. Uh, They're hearing, you know, about uh, whether it be the DOJ or the intelligence communities or even in the DOD, all these different agencies. I don't think they realize that the deep state extends past Washington, D.C. into these private entities. Yeah, I mean, if you actually look at the history of the deep state, I call it the military industrial academic complex, this triangle. Um, President Eisenhower talked about it in his farewell address, and then uh, Fulbright talked about it. He called it actually the military industrial academic complex. Eisenhower called it the military industrial complex. That triangle is based on this notion that they are they're the ones who know better than everyone elizabeth warren's part of that all the establishment is part of that what's fascinating is that when you actually look at it though for example innovation or technology most of the greatest innovations in technology do not come out of the military industrial complex they come from everyday people you know you asked about the invention of email you know a 14 year old boy is the one who invented the first tv in a small farm in franklin idaho a 14 year old kid invented email the narrative that the military industrial academic complex likes to put forward is that they're the ones that own everything. And that's why we should so much feel happy that we're funding war as well as sickness, because that's what they profit from. Right. And, you know, when you look at Harvard, it's part of that elite industrial complex. Um, these guys actually do not produce a lot when you really look at it. What they really learn how to do is to move money around. Elizabeth Warren's part of that. She tries to fake what I call she's part of the not-so-obvious establishment, that she cares for the everyday poor black person, poor white person, the working people. But fundamentally, she exists to make sure those people actually want to change stuff get sucked back into the establishment. And that's what's so insidious. You know, it's easy to understand the existing establishment. People like Elizabeth Warren are the more insidious part that are used to basically entrap people to stick on with the establishment. So let me, we only got about a, a minute and a half left uh, before I got to take a break. Scott, we'll start with you. This is all fascinating stuff. Fascinating it is, that you guys are is. saying. Go it, ahead, Scott. It is. It is. And it's, and it's uh, particularly interesting that, you know, that, and, and I agree with um, 
with uh, Dr. Uh, Shiva. Dr. Shiva that that it is it is in uh, academia is definitely part of that complex. So it's it's rather ironic that in uh, that uh, U.S. academia is one of the leading is uh, in the vanguard of you know anti anti free speech. Um, the anti-free speech impetus that we've been seeing across, you know, college campuses, not just in Massachusetts, but everywhere else, you know. And so ironically, they owe uh, a, a lot of they owe a lot of uh, their sources of funding to the government. But yet at the same time, they're they're creating this PC or they're the leaders of this PC environment that's making it difficult for people to, you know, basically um, exercise their First Amendment rights. Right. Yeah, it's a very interesting. So let me ask you this real quick. Um about 30 seconds, uh, we've got about 45 seconds. What do you think, Scott, from awareness standpoint, I'm talking about awareness all day today, what can people do to make themselves more aware of this establishment politics that you have, you've been able to figure it out? What, what, how do you think people can figure this out? Well, I mean, I guess, I guess it, unfortunately, we've gone down the path where we have to kind of follow the Soviet, uh, the old Soviet model. You have to, you have to read a lot of disparate sources of information mm-hmm. And, and to basically get to assemble the picture of reality that you should be viewing, you can't rely on any one source of information anymore. So, you know, basically, you know, the internet has allowed us now at least we can poke around and access different sources of information to see what is going on around us. So, Dr. You know, Shiva, the, the old days are over. Dr. Shiva, real quick, um, can do you think there's going to be more people? that are capable of defeating the Elizabeth Warrens coming forward? Or do you think that's uh, it's going to take a while before we get to that point? Well, I, you know, in Massachusetts, I'm the only one who actually wants to defeat her and is capable of defeating her. I've put in about $1.1 million of my own money. But more importantly, we're creating a broad-based movement. And I think to your earlier question, the biggest way that people can really understand truth from lies is to look at a central principle that nature operates by. Nature is decentralized. Nature never likes to centralize things. And when you start looking at politics and policies, are they for centralization of power or are they for decentralization of power back to the people? It's one of the best ways to start a lens that gives us really the ability to understand truth from lies and the establishment versus the people. Look at how nature operates. Wow. That's it. I'll tell you what. I couldn't ask for two better guests. Hey, listen, God bless you guys, and, and good luck in your candidacies. And I will always be there to support both of you because you're outside of the box Scott Eulinger, congressional candidate for Pennsylvania's 15th district and former CIA operations officer, and Dr. Shiva Ayadori, a.k.a. Dr. Shiva from Massachusetts, running for U.S. Senate uh, candidate against Elizabeth Warren. Get her out of there. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Have a great Thanksgiving. You got it. You got it. I'll put your stuff out there when we come back. This is Jonathan Gillum filling in for Sean Hannity on the Sean Hannity Radio Show.